Hey, welcome everybody. This is Scott Kokenauer with Serving Strong, and this is the episode four of Fridays on Excellence. I'm glad you're here, and we've got a full show here, so I'm going to go right into it. We're going to do our three coaching questions first. So the first coaching question is, how much is enough? How much is enough? Think about that for a moment. The second question is, if you were debt-free today, what could you do that you cannot do right now? If you were debt-free, if you had no debt whatsoever, what could you do today that you currently cannot do? And third, what is your idea of an ideal retirement? Ideal retirement. As you can tell from these three questions and the scrolling thing across the bottom, we are talking about financial excellence today. Um, the, as with all of the three questions, uh, the, you're encouraged to take one or two or maybe all three of them, put them on three by five cards and stick them on your dashboard of your car or the, you know, on a post-it note on your, um, you know, your computer, but live with them. They're designed to help you go deep inside of yourself and really begin to pick up some things that you otherwise would never pick up. So um, those are the three coaching questions. And with every episode, we start with three coaching questions. You can take those questions with you all week long or longer. And uh, so that's that segment. I want to move right into the second segment, which is our two pillars of excellence. Two pillars of excellence. And I've got a special guest with me. I'm going to bring him on here. His name is Sam Kokenauer. Hi, Sam. Hi. Um, How you doing? Good, good. Um, for those of you who may not know, this is my son. And um, the reason I brought him on today, number one, he's at our house over the Thanksgiving holiday with his wife. And that's always a, a joy to to have these guys here from Columbus, Ohio, about a two and a half hour ride from our house. Um, but I got to thinking he's going to be here and we were scheduled to talk about financial excellence. Now, the thing about Sam and Allison, his wife, is that they have recently become debt-free in 2020. There is a good sign that 2020 isn't all bad. So, um, Sam, what I want to do is <clears throat> we're going to talk about our first pillar, and that first pillar is financial freedom is possible for everyone. So tell us a little bit about your story, because that kind of feeds into this idea that financial freedom is possible for everyone. Um, how did you get started with this whole idea of going debt free? So, um, which my, my wife can attest to this completely. Um, but back in 2018, uh, we were just kind of living life. Um, we had our, a car loan, we had our, uh, student loan debt. Um, we were trying to save for a house. We were trying to invest, um, for our retirement with our paychecks and we were trying to do a bunch of different things all at once. And uh, my wife came up to me one day and just didn't understand the budget, didn't understand our finances and said, how can we make good money, both of us with, with two incomes coming into the house and we still feel like we can't do the things that we want to do? Um, and that question itself kind of opened up the door for, okay, maybe we should start looking a little bit more into our finances. Um, just having a good income is not the only thing that you need in order to be financially successful. Um, so jumped into um, do, learning a little bit about finance through Dave Ramsey's baby steps, um, started working through those and um, ended up attacking, attacking, uh, paying off of our debt. And um, instead of trying to invest and save and do a bunch of different things all at once, we just focus on one thing at a time. Um, and just this April, we finished um, paying off all of our debt, had a total of just over $96,000 in debt. And um, it took us about 23 months to complete from start to finish, um, paying that off completely. Okay. And um, since then, we've just been able to, I mean, now we're, we're starting to save um, for a house. We already have our emergency fund saved. Um, and so we're, we're starting to see some success with that because we focused on one thing at a time and really attack, uh, attacked it together. So you, you got to this point where <clears throat> something had to be done, right? I'm, I'm always curious about people who make significant changes like the one you're doing. And <clears throat> I want to go back. I always want to figure out what was going through the mind of someone that 
caused this this change to not only start but to maintain because <clears throat> what you did was so much greater than a new year's resolution right mm -hmm. yeah yeah I, I would say the thing that kind of pushed us um obviously so we got married in 2016 started kind of getting organized with our finances in 2018 paid off our debt here in 2020 um we we want to do different things with our life we want to be able to afford a house um, with the housing market and everything, especially down in Columbus right now. Um, it, that is a big financial thing that you kind of have to think about and work through. Um, we want to be able to start a family, start having kids, um, just be able to do, do things that we want to do without having to worry about our finances so much. And that was the biggest thing um, that we kind of learned is you have to figure out what your why is um, in order to push you through when things get tough. Um, 23 months, it was a short amount of time to pay off the $96,000. Um, but for us, 23 months was forever because <laughs> you just <laughs> see the amount of money and you're like, I don't know when this is ever going to be completed, but right. it's focusing on why are we doing this? What are we focusing towards? It's not so that we can completely get out of debt so that we can buy something that's fleeting. No, it's it's because we want to be able to set ourselves up financially for success, be able to buy a house and not have a huge monthly payment on the house, um, to be able to have kids and not have to worry about, okay, how are we going to pay for the hospital bill? How are we going to pay to feed them and clothe them and everything? Um, so really just finding your why is, is really important and that kind of pushes you through. So you were able to see something out into the future and right. kind of see the storm coming so to speak, and uh, enough that you did, you started it. Now let's go to the journey of freedom because the first point is financial freedom is possible for everyone. And I'm sure there are those who are watching or listening to the podcast are thinking $96,000 in 23 months. That's not, I mean, we're at $140,000 of debt and bless their hearts. That's great. But we're just going to kind of keep going. Um, this journey, how did it keep you, how did you stay on track when things didn't go well? First of all, you alluded to the fact that it wasn't just a, this simple, straight line of easy mm -hmm. <laughs> process. How did you handle those times when you really thought this is going to go on forever? It, so we, $96,000 seems like a lot of money. Um, going through, and I guess it really is a lot of money when you, when you think about what you owe going through our financial journey of getting out of debt, we broke it down. Um, we, we focused on a month by month basis. Okay. How much in the month of X, whatever month that we were in, how much do you think that we can pay off? So we would, we would kind of look at the paychecks coming in, look at our total expenses, ultimately working through a budget, which is one of the biggest things that anybody can do. Um, in order to kind of get their finances in order, you got to be able to tell your money where where it's going and what categories it's going to and not just kind of run through the money and see what happens. Um, but just focusing on a month by month basis, um, seeing how much we could pay off, trying to take extra work. Um, and we just kind of challenged ourselves to see how much we could pay off on a month by month basis. And actually, we did a prog progression and, and posted on a social media account just mm -hmm. to kind of have a little bit of accountability at the end of the month. Okay. This is how much we paid off. Mm -hmm. And and so we had the accountability of people saying, oh, I wonder how much they paid off this month that we were able to post that. And when you have those months where it's a lot less than what you normally were paying off, um, it's not that, I mean, we were still making, making progress, which is important, but it's kind of pushing yourself to say, I want to get a big number this month mm -hmm. um, and just attacking those debts. All right. So you didn't try to uh, get it all done, all the 23 months all at once. You you took okay. it with what you knew within the foreseeable future and set a, a an interim goal. All of these are great points. Right. And, and there's no way that we're going to be able to go through everything that I would like to go through today in 20 minutes mm -hmm. or 30 minutes. Um, so I'm hoping that we will be able to get back together and, and talk about this, whether we post it on a live session or you're able to join me. Um, so there's a lot of stuff here, a lot of stuff, but it feeds into the next pillar on financial excellence. And that is there's one simple key to financial freedom. And that is every dollar has a name. Tell me about that, how that 
kept you going throughout the whole journey. Absolutely. And I'm, I'm going to pull a little bit from Dave Ramsey because of the success that we had um, just with, with his information. Um, you can look, you can Google him or search him. He's got a lot of books out and a lot of different software. Um, but the biggest thing is a budget. We kind of talked about that prior to um, how we focused on a budget and we worked the budget. And that's how we were able to really see some success in our finances. And it's the sense that you know how much is coming in on a given month, or you can estimate how much you're expecting to get within a month. You have to tell every single dollar of that income within that month where it's going to go. So obviously when you get a budget, you're gonna work on your housing. You have to pay your mortgage or you have to pay your rent in order to have a shelter so that you can sleep and you can rest. You have to focus on eating and, and fueling yourself, giving yourself nutrition, um, transportation in order to get to the job or the career that you're working on in order to make money. Um, there, there's a bunch of different categories that go within, within your budget. But the biggest thing that a lot of people do when they hear budget, they think negative. A budget is going to limit me and restrict me and I'm not gonna be able to do the things that I wanna do. That is a ridiculous notion. A budget is really giving you the money to spend for the particular things. You are thankful that you have a house in order to sleep. Well, you have to pay the money in order to keep that house. So you're able to spend that money in order to pay your rent or your mortgage. Um, and, and budgeting, is not just on the things that you don't want to spend money on, like your utilities and, and gas to fill up your car. You want to budget fun things as well. So you want to go on a vacation, you have to budget, okay, I need to put X amount of dollars away for vacation every month so that when it comes to time to have the vacation, I'm going to have the money in order to spend it. Um, if you have a, a budget line for something that's fun or your, your fun money to go out and buy a new shirt or different, some new technology, you budget that in so that when it comes time in order to take that money out of that particular category, you have the fun money in order to do those things. But you want to attach an, a dollar amount to each particular category and essentially put all of the income that you're gonna have for a given month into a category. So you're giving every single dollar a name. This dollar is gonna go to this category. This dollar is gonna go to this category. So that you don't have random money just kind of throwing out there and you're just spending money on things and not even thinking about it. And next thing you know, the month is over and you don't have any money left and you're living paycheck to paycheck. And that's what you want to get away from. So, so you're telling me that um, it's the 27th of November. And if I had a hundred dollars in my um, coffee fund, you know, mm -hmm. where I could go to a coffee shop and I could, I could get my espresso and there's no more money in that bucket in, in that account or that uh, envelope, so to speak. I have to go three days in order to go to the coffee shop because it's a new month, right? Absolutely, absolutely. Or or you can get creative with your budget, and if you had some extra money in a different fund that you weren't going to spend for that month, you can slide some money over. It's really just making sure that your money is allocated to a particular area and not only do you have all your utilities and all the necessities covered, but you want to have everything covered on your budget so that you're staying focused and staying coordinated with the money that you're going in. Your income is your biggest wealth building tool. That's a big thing that Dave Ramsey says. Your income is what's going to fuel it, but you have to make that income work for you. And, and one quick stat um, about spending randomly on random things. Um, I just saw this a couple of days ago on social media. If you were to randomly spend anywhere from $27 to $28 a day on random things, which is very easy to do, you go to Starbucks, you get a couple coffees or a pastry, you go to the technology store and you end up getting a gift card or you get some candy at the gas station, that money adds up. Think about this, anywhere from $27 to $28 a day spent on random giving, $10,000 a year that you're going to be spending that's, without even thinking about it. $10,000. Cool. Think about not doing all of those random things and saving that money. At the end of the year, you would have $10,000 to put towards your debt, to put towards savings, to put towards paying off your house. So those are the things you want to think about those big numbers and how $10 seems very minuscule at the time when you're standing in line. Or you go to the restaurant and you're with your friends and you end up picking up their tab. That's a mm -hmm. great thing. But all of that money you need to have allocated in the budget so that you don't get to the end of the year and you've spent ten thousand dollars randomly. Wow! Wow! I, I would imagine that uh, all of us are guilty of that. 
mm-hmm. and to some degree or another. And um, man, there's a lot of pressure from the culture to do that, mm-hmm. you know? So, so basically every single dollar has a name. Now you can change the name. So mm-hmm. I could borrow from my shirt um, account and put some money in there because I, I know I'm not going to buy any more shirts in the next three days. So I can go to the coffee shop because I've just switched the name. The problem is when there are dollars with no names. Right. Dollars exactly. Because no names when there's leave. dollars with no names, nothing, you, it can go wherever and you don't even mm-hmm. think about it and you're just spending money. You worked hard for that money. You want to be able to put it to a particular right. area. And in regards to getting financial success or having financial success or paying off debt, which, which is a big thing that a lot of people are working through right now, you put that in your budget as paying off debt. This is how much money is going to go to mm-hmm. debt this month. That is a fund that you don't touch. Right. You don't want to say, okay, I'm going to pull from paying off my debt in order to get my coffee. That's not something that we're working on. Okay. You want to have that higher calling and focus on your why so that yes, you're doing a budget and you can kind of shift your dollars here and there. But what is your why? What is the thing that you need to be focusing on right now? And like you spoke to at the beginning of this of this time together, um, you, you want to be able to have that financial success. You want to be able to um, get out of debt and be able to be successful and be excellent in your finances. Right, right. Well, again, we, we could go on all day, I'm sure. Uh, Absolutely. <laughs> I can't imagine <laughs> the, the position that you're currently in now where you have no debt and you're coming into the holiday season with a totally different perspective than you've ever had. This is probably, well, this is the first holiday season debt free for you, isn't it? Right. Right. And, and on top of that, we have allocated money into our budget to be able to buy gifts for friends and family this year. So going to buy Christmas shopping is not pulling out the credit card and figuring out how to pay for it in January, February, March, April. It's, I have the money saved already so I can freely spend that on others and be able to give and be generous with my money because I have set myself self up for success in the many years of going through all of this. Right. And not only that, but you've got a buffer fund, right? Correct. Yeah. Uh, you, so we have an emergency it, fund now and, and we're, we're starting now to save for a down payment for a house. Okay. And, and in our show prep, when you and I were talking, um, you were showing some, sharing some statistics. There's one in particular, yeah. um, when it comes to a thousand dollars, being able to pay for something that you didn't expect an emergency, a, uh, uh, a surprise. What is, mm-hmm. what was that statistic? Then the percentage of Americans who don't have that capability of paying cash for something that's a thousand dollars. So, uh, so the statistic is approximately 66% of Americans throughout the country would struggle to pay for an a thousand dollar emergency. So think about, um, your, your heater goes out in your house, your car needs a new transmission. Um, you go to the hospital unexpectedly and you don't know how to pay your bill. 66% of Americans would not be able to cover an a thousand dollar emergency fund or a thousand dollar emergency with their emergency fund. And that's just astronomical. So over half of people think about your family. If you think about 10, 10 family members in your family or 10 friends or 10 coworkers, over half of them would not be able to pay for a thousand dollar emergency if it were to come up and they would have to use various forms of borrowing money from a friend or using a credit card or taking out a personal loan. Mm -hmm. And, And that right there gets at the root at we don't normally as Americans think about having a plan with our finances. We think as long as I don't hit zero on my bank account, I'm good. No, it's not just that. It's bringing in more money than you're letting go out in the given month. And not only that, but you're having all of your money categorized in particular areas so that you can stay focused on the bigger goals of getting out of debt, paying off your right. house, different things right. like that. Okay. Well, uh, thanks, Sam. I, I really appreciate the the being able to share, being willing to share your story with us a little bit. I'm sure there, there were some dark days in that journey. There were, there <laughs> <Absolutely>. were storms <laughs> and I'm, you know, it, it's, it's probably still the number one uh, topic that puts a strain on a marriage is finances. Mm-hmm. And just because you have a plan doesn't mean it's all going to go just nicely, but right. having a plan is better than fighting with no plan. Right. Absolutely. So, um, yep. 
I'm sure that we'll we'll talk more about this. What we're doing here, if you're listening, what we're doing is talking about one of the six systems of excellence, that being financial. The other systems are spiritual, relational, emotional, physical, and vocational. This one is financial. And there's a takeaway. So we're going to move into the takeaway section here. And uh, there's, uh, you've heard Sam refer to financial peace or uh, Dave Ramsey, which is, he's the known for the Financial Peace University. And I'm going to put up a, I'm going to add to our picture here, this quick start budget form. Now this is a downloadable uh, form on the Financial Peace University. I've also put it on servingstrong.com slash Friday. So if you want to go there, you will see all of the downloads of the takeaways that we do every week. And you'll see this. It's called FPU Budgeting Forms. That's what you'll you'll be looking for on servingstrong.com slash Friday. And and you'll see that uh, this... This gives you in, uh, di- uh, some uh, directions for dealing with irregular income if you don't get a, a steady set of um, paychecks. So it gives you that monthly cash flow. All of the this entire download gives you not only the instructions and directions, but forms that you can literally use. And there's allocated spending. Uh, it's just it goes on and on, and that's completely free. Um, so I want you all to take another look at your financial system. Remember, we talk about these systems like systems in the body, like the digestive system and the neurological system and, and all these different systems. If one of them is suffering, it has an impact on one or more of the other systems and you become a sick human being. So you want your financial system to be as top excellent as it can be, because that helps you become the fullest expression of your unique God-given design. Sam, thank you for joining us. Um, Those of you you listening, next week we're going to be talking about, let me think here, it's emotional is the next one. So next week we'll be talking about emotional excellence. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining. Thanks, Sam. Absolutely.